Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today I just want to share some of my finds from a local flea market. Well, I say local, it's just the closest to me, but it's not really local at all. It is called the Pocono Bazaar. And uh, if you're in the, you know, tri-state area or, you know, in Pennsylvania and the Poconos or at least northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, you'll know that the, uh, the old version of this flea market was Marshall's Creek. The Marshall's Creek flea market was absolutely huge. Even when I lived in Jersey, my family used to come up and visit it all the time. I, I talk about it in other videos. I used to get my fireworks and my knives and stuff when I was younger there. Super cool, massive, massive place. Well, over the years, it eventually closed down and down the road from where it used to be, the old location is now the Pocono Bazaar. The flea market is open every weekend, all year round, but obviously during the summer months, there's a lot of outside vendors as well. So anyway, this is just a couple things that I grabbed while I was there. All right, so let me get these guys out of the way because they're taking up most of the room here. Uh, these look like a pair of Crocs, but they're not. These are Fugazis. <laughs> so if you're not familiar, Fugazi is just a copy or a ripoff. Um, these don't actually say Croc anywhere on them, but, um, you know, I saw a little stand there. It was an older Asian gentleman, and he had tons and tons of these, and they were only nine bucks for, for men's, all sizes, and I think it was eight bucks for women's. Uh, but uh, I tried on a pair just to see because I was just kind of curious because I already have my, my Crocs. I love my Crocs. And uh, I have to say, I was thoroughly impressed. These are super, super comfortable. They're even more comfortable than real Crocs. And for nine bucks, I couldn't pass it up, so I just grabbed a pair. Um, but yeah, just uh, super cool. Just happened to grab those. I forget to show you. But anyway, also grab some soap when you go to these... Uh, you know, different types of uh, craft fairs and flea markets. There's always a soap lady, always. Sometimes the soap sucks. I've been to places where you pick up the soap and it smells great, and then like you come home and it's like literally just the outside layer has the, uh, you know, the scent in it or the oil or whatever, and then the inside just like whatever, soy or goat milk soap, whatever they're pushing. This was a, a super nice woman that was there and these smell ridiculously delicious. This one's black currant vanilla. Oh my God, it smells awesome. Um, this one is, what is this, vanilla oatmeal. And then I got a uh, black tar, uh, or excuse me, not black tar, pine tar. I originally had a pine tar bar from, what is it, uh, Dr. Squatch, okay? Remember Dr. Squatch when it first hit YouTube for ads? Now it's just, I mean, it's been years since you've seen the constant ads over and over again. Uh, when they first hit the market, I picked up a, a bar of their, their uh, I think it was just called pine tar as well. And uh, this one's completely different, but I remember that bar, it was good, it smelled okay, it had like oats in it, so like it was really rough, so it exfoliated really well as well. But I remember like after I got out of the shower, it was just, I was so stripped of oils, I was like squeaky, squeaky clean. You know what I mean? It really stripped my entire body of, of any kind of like natural moisture, which I didn't really like, to be honest. I just, I was so ridiculously dry, and it was so good of a soap, uh, that I didn't like it, if that makes sense. I know it sounds stupid to some people, but maybe you know what I'm talking about. But if you ever use the um, uh, the pine tar from Dr. Squatch, this smells way, way better. So I'm very curious to see, um, you know, how this actually works out. All right, so let me get the exciting stuff uh, in frame here. All right, because that was the not so exciting stuff for most people. All right, so these two uh, cases, these are little ammo boxes. Uh, I think these are MTM. Yes, they are made in America. These were completely covered in filth. I cleaned them up. Now they, they look fine. Uh, these are for 357 slash uh, 38 Special. We grabbed these because Christine and I just got two new guns. Well, actually, we're going to get them. They're still in the mail right now. Um, but she's wanted a, an old 38 Special revolver for years. Literally, probably five years since we first got into guns together. Uh, I've always been into guns, but she kind of picked up on it and really enjoyed it and wanted to start carrying and all that kind of stuff. And, and she has her own little gun collection and stuff, but this is a particular gun that she wanted forever, so I told her, just why don't you just go get it, you know? And then, of course, it's a great excuse for me to get a, a his and hers <laughs> version. So you'll see. I'll post a picture on Instagram when we get them, but it's a smaller old revolver and a larger old revolver, and both are extremely common, extremely rich in history and, and cinema and actual history as well. So you guys can probably guess what they are, but... <clears throat> anyway, we've been looking for uh, some ammo boxes for 38s, so she found two more. These were completely filthy. There was a guy there who had all kinds of random stuff, including knives. That's what attracted me. As soon as I see a knife case, you know, I got to be over there checking them out. Uh, the knife prices were totally random and very expensive for some stuff that really shouldn't have been expensive. So 
I lost interest looking at the knives fairly quickly, but of course I watched, you know, all the other stuff or looked at all the other stuff he had. He had a lot of gun related things and I asked him if he had some holsters. He broke out box after box after box of just random gun stuff. So if you're a gun guy, <laughs> go check it out at, uh, at Pocono Bazaar. I mean, it was, I have to say, bizarre because there was no rhyme or reason. I think he mentioned he gets this stuff from someone else who might bring it in. Uh, but like, imagine like a beat up cardboard box about like this big and there's no like organization whatsoever. There's literally like boxes like this, completely filthy. And there's these are only two, by the way. If there was more of these MTMs, I would have grabbed them all. But I'm just saying like, just gun related stuff. That's it. Holsters, um, you know, a couple random bayonets, loose rounds, like literally loose live uh, cartridges, just at random stuff. Some of them were sticky. Some of them, I mean, they're all old. It's like if you took everything gun related you had and put it into a massive bag and then use a machine to shake it up like a grab bag and then just filled cardboard boxes with it, that's what it looked like. Uh, but you never know what you're going to find. I actually found some reloading equipment in there, some dies and stuff. I, I saw some just bullets for like muzzle loaders, like some nice hunting uh, bullets. Um, you name it. So looking through the stuff, there's just uh, three things they found that I actually wanted. Um, although there were some good deals on, like, God, he had a, he had like a Glock 42 holster outside the waistband, totally brand new, in the package, five bucks. Like, that's hard to beat. Uh, Christina actually carries a Glock 42, but she has a, um, a light, light laser combo. She has the, uh, Streamlight TLR6. So, obviously, that holster's not going to work out. That's what she was actually looking for. That's what I was asking to begin with. But, long story short, uh, got these boxes, and these were a buck each. Hard to beat. Let's see, then I found this. Now he had some empty boxes like this that were half crushed that had literally random ammo. Like it would be a 12 gauge box and there'd be like six nine millimeter rounds in there, all crusty and dusty. And then another one would just be like random two or three 22s mixed with like, I don't know, a 30 out six round. It was just the most random thing in the world. But uh, I saw this, as soon as I picked it up, the, the box looked brand new, and it was heavy, so I figured it was just a full box of ammo, which it was. It's a full box 20 gauge. Christina shoots 20 gauge. She has several shotguns. She has a, a coach style gun. Um, you know, uh, what does she have? A Remington Youth Bantam, I think she has in 20 gauge. Uh, she has a, an old, really old shotgun in, in 20 gauge as well. So anyway, so I, I'm like, what do you want for this? I don't know, five bucks, <laughs> sold. That's awesome. This is like a, maybe $11 or $12 box of ammo all day long. These are older. The Winchester uh, AA has not, I mean, they changed their the box design, I would say. It's not the logo or anything, but this has to be at least, I don't know, 20 years old, maybe a little older. But uh, yeah, so that's the score. I mean, ammo still works 20 years later. Then picked up some hooks. There was a nice outdoor shop. They had everything you can imagine fishing. Uh, good price on these circle hooks. Um, a lot of people use these for uh, catfish fishing and stuff like that. These are live bait hooks. I actually use these for bass. And I'll put live bait on it and I'll throw it out there with a bobber. And uh, as soon as it goes down, the bass you know, comes and takes the live bait. And as it's you know, swimming off, you don't really set the hook with these. You just kind of wait for the tension to build as your line gets tight. And it's just, you know, hooks gently right in the corner of their mouth. And it hooks very, very well. And because those tips hook in as well, um, it's hard for them to throw it. So I have to say the biggest bass that I've ever caught locally was on live bait. That's when I did, I think I did a video. I don't know for sure. I know I posted pictures on Instagram way back in the day, but I caught like at least a four uh, pounder um, on some bluegill. I actually went there first, caught some bluegill, filled the bucket, used the bluegill as my live bait. So anyway, those old hooks are kind of janky looking now and rusty, so I picked up those. So I got some new ones. And the last thing, and the most exciting probably for most of you, is a Zippo. This is actually the first thing that I bought when I got there. Uh, I saw this on the shelf, I flipped it over, it said five bucks, I said sold. Any Zippo that works is worth five dollars. I'd buy any of it. Um, so this one obviously has a NASCAR related theme. This is actually a, a longer story, I'm not going to tell the whole story because it might be boring to people, but so this is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Okay, now if you look at the, the car in the background, it shows a uh, number eight. This is actually when he was number eight. So we know that he, he drove number 88, but before that he drove number eight, and I think it was, uh, it was sponsored by Budweiser. Um, that's when he was on his father's team before he went over to Hendrick Sports. Uh, you know, but anyway, this, this actual image is part of a bigger image. 
So you can see there's a signature on the bottom, and that is actually of, I think his name is Sammy Bates, or Sam Bates, something like that. But he is an artist, and he's basically the official NASCAR artist, or at least was. I don't know if he still does it. I haven't followed NASCAR in years now. Um, but so, like, anything art-related, he was their guy. Like, he was literally working for NASCAR, made all kinds of cool portraits and, and paintings and stuff. And there was a painting. This is just a portion of the painting. It was much larger, obviously. You could see the whole car and everything. And uh, in 2004, when Dale Jr. won the Daytona 500, they slapped it on a Zippo. All right, so you can see this is a 2004 model. If There we go. Camera focuses. All right, so 2004 rolls around. Zippo goes, yeah, let's do a commemorative. You know, Dale just won the uh, Daytona 500. And this was actually, it was sold individually. And it was also sold in a set with Dale Sr., okay? And same thing, it was a Sammy Bates photo of Dale Sr. You could buy this actual painting, the full painting. You can look on eBay. It's not actually not, not too expensive, but long story short, totally worth the five bucks. Um, I'm not specifically a Dale Jr. fan. I've, I've watched him race. I've, I've seen him won uh, in person. He's cool. It's whatever. Actually, my favorite driver of all time was Mark Martin. Uh, I loved Mark Martin. He was the oldest driver as well when I watched but he was just awesome. He was all smiles, got to you know, meet him in person. It, what's cool about NASCAR, if you've never been to like an event, is you get to like see these drivers and you can kind of talk to them. They're riding around in their carts and as you're walking around the park and stuff or, or the you know, track, um, they're in the trailers, but they're just like you know, hanging among everyone else. You know, It's not that big of a deal. It's not like going to a football game or something. You're not gonna get a chance to really have a conversation with a, a football star or a baseball star. You know, That's what was so cool about NASCAR. They're just down to earth dudes and just walking around and driving around and, They'll wave to you and they'll sign stuff for you. It's pretty cool. But anyway, Mark Martin was my guy. I liked a lot of other people as well over the years. But anyway, nothing wrong with uh, Dale Jr. But it was definitely a score for five bucks. Um, it was just the Zippo itself. It is, as you can see in there, slightly used. There's no fluid in or anything. The, the wick is just slightly burned. So someone, you know, probably used this, but very lightly. There's no play in the hinge, really. This seems almost brand new. Uh, I saw one, uh, there's one on eBay right now in the case, brand new, mint condition, um, with all the you know packaging it came with for like 85 bucks or something. And I think there's one actually available in the UK on there for 35 pounds or whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. For five bucks, like I said, it doesn't matter what the design is. I don't care if it's unicorns and rainbows. Any Zippo is worth five bucks to me. If nothing else, I could just use the insert. You know what I mean? Uh, if the case is really you know messed up or you know, too far gone or the hinge was broken or something. And if the hinge is broken, who cares? Send it back to Zippo. You know what I'm saying? Spend a couple bucks on shipping and you'll, you'll get a brand new one back or get it fixed. But that was the biggest score uh, was the uh, the Dale Jr. Zippo. So that was just going the old collection. Just a cool little story. Just won't remind me of my day of shopping with the wife. So that is it. Uh, unfortunately, no knives just because I didn't see anything worth getting. Uh, I would have loved to pick up a, a new gun, but there was none for sale there. Uh, I have to tell you, I did hit up a, uh, a Puerto Rican uh, food truck that was banging. I got a shish kebab. I think I posted a picture of it on, um, uh, on Instagram as well. Uh, but man, so good. Food truck food is just out of this world. And they had all kinds of delicious looking food as well. Empanadas and arepos, which is like a, a corn cake with cheese. And, you know, they had gyros and all kinds of delicious fatty foods and stuff. But I just stuck with the shish kebab because I'm still very much on a diet. It was absolutely delicious, but having just the meat wasn't, you know, as bad with uh, calories and stuff. Anyway, just wanted to uh, share these finds with the guys. Uh, let me know down in the comment section what cool stuff you're finding at garage sales and church sales and moving sales and estate sales and flea markets. It's just fun. I just love seeing this kind of stuff. And uh, one man's junk is another man's treasure. Sometimes you could find some really awesome prices. Some people know what things are worth and they don't care. They're selling it cheap. Other people don't know what things are worth and they're selling it cheap. You know, I know a lot of people's side hustle these days is, is the flipping game. You know, you buy, if you know what you're looking at anyway, you look at stuff and you go, wow, you know, they're selling this for five bucks. I could probably pop on this on eBay and sell for 20 bucks tomorrow. I'm not going to. I buy stuff mostly just for my personal collection. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the flipping game is, is big too. So if you're short on cash and you know a lot about your hobby, go find stuff. If you're a knife person and you know a lot about knives, you go to the flea market. I can't tell you how many people send me messages all summer long. Like, oh my God, look at this cold steel Voyager I got for $20 at a flea market. Very cool. And most times it's not for people flipping it. Most times it's just like, you know, they just like the knife and they want it for the collection. But I see it constantly. So yeah, get out there and enjoy some fresh air and, and check out other people's junk <laughs> because you never know what treasures you're gonna find. 
So that's all for this one. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.